Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, I continue with problems. This is the third series of problems related to quadrangles. Actually, triangles and quadrangles, they are bunched together. Um, and uh, obviously, all these elements are used in all these problems. So, this series contains nine problems, and let me just go one by one. Um, prove that in an equilateral triangle, sum of distances of any internal point to all three sides is constant and equal to the altitude. Okay, this is equilateral triangle. And we need to prove that the distance from a point to these three sides, sum of these distances, is the same as an altitude. Now, if you remember, uh, in one of the prior lectures, we had a similar problem when you had isosceles triangle and any point on the base, again, two distances from two different sides, and uh, we have proven that sum of these is equal to an altitude to, to a leg. Now, I'll just use this right now. Now, how can I use it? Well, let's draw a, per a, a parallel line through this. Now, obviously, since this is parallel to this, these are two perpendiculars, so these two segments are congruent to each other, which means that I have to prove that sum of these two is equal to this piece. But this is exactly the same as this particular theorem, except in this case, it was uh, an altitude towards the leg, uh, but in case of uh, equilateral triangle, all, L, uh, all altitudes are the same. So basically, this distance from this to this is the same as from this to this. All altitudes are the same. So that finished basically the proof. Um, and it's kind of common that if you have solved one problem, then you have another problem which you can reduce to the previously solved one. Well, do it. I mean, that's the easiest way. Uh, it's not the uh, how many little steps you are making towards a proof or solution or construction or whatever. What's important is whether you can or cannot do it. And in this case, the easiest way to do is just to, re to, to reduce the problem to a previously solved one and basically forget about all the little steps which involved in solving this previous problem. But solved, it's solved can be used and reused. Prove that parallelogram with congruent diagonals is a rectangle. All right, so you have parallelogram with congruent diagonals. We have to prove that this is a rectangle. All right. Um, what can we do? Well, for instance, we will um, draw a line parallel to this diagonal here. Now, since these are parallel and these are parallel, obviously, EB and AC are parallel and equal to each other. Now, since diagonals are congruent, then EB and BD are congruent. Now, since this is equal to this and equal to this, it looks like BA is a median in isosceles triangle BGE. BGE is isosceles because this diagonal is equal to this diagonal, and this, in turn, equals to this one. So BGE is isosceles, and BA is median because AG is equal to AE. Now, in isosceles, in the isosceles triangle, median uh, from the top to the base uh, uh, coincides with angle bisector and altitude. That's why this is 90 degree, and this is 90 degree, which means we have a parallelogram with 90 degrees internal angle. 
which means all angles are 90 degrees because opposite are uh, congruent to each other and uh, neighboring uh, angles are supplemental to each other and supplemental to 90 is 90 degrees as well. So all 90 degrees, so that makes all angles equal, right angles, and that's a rectangle, by definition, by the way. Remember, the definition of the rectangle is a parallelogram with all internal uh, angles equal to each other. So they're all equal to 90 degrees. Prove that parallelogram with perpendicular diagonals is a rhombus. So again, we have a parallelogram and diagonals are perpendicular to each other. So these are right angles. Okay, they are perpendicular to each other, but now let's look at these right triangles. A, B, C, D, M. B, M, A and A, M, D. Both are right triangles. The quantity are congruent because in a parallelogram, diagonals are intersecting in the middle. Uh, this one is common for these triangles, and that's why triangles are congruent, and that's why this particular hypotenuse is equal to this one. Now, and this, in turn, is congruent to BC because it's a parallelogram, and AB is congruent to CD because it's a parallelogram, so all four sides are congruent to each other, and this is a definition of a rhombus. Proven. Fine. That's easy. Uh, prove that parallelogram with a diagonal being an angle bisector is a rhombus. Okay, very similar. But now, instead of perpendicularity, of the diagonals, I have that these angles are congruent to each other, because this is a bisector. Okay, that's good. Now, this angle is equal to this, obviously, because these are parallel and this is transversal. So these are alternate uh, interior angles which makes a triangle ABC uh, the one with two angles at the base congruent to each other, and we know that these triangles are isosceles. So that's what makes these two sides uh, congruent to each other. AB is congruent to BC because ABC is isosceles triangle by two uh, congruent angles at the base AC. And obviously, because it's a parallelogram, BC is equal to AD, AB is equal to CD, all sides are equal, that's the definition of a rhombus. Given a rhombus from a point of intersection of its diagonals, we dropped perpendiculars to all four sides. Prove that points of intersection of these perpendiculars form a rectangle. Okay, um, since it's a rhombus, let me just draw it this way. Better, a more acute angle. Okay, rhombus. Now, you have two diagonals, one and two, and from the center, we dropped perpendiculars. One, two, one, two. So we have to prove that the endpoints of these perpendiculars form a rectangle. All right. Um, let's think. Well, since it's a rhombus, all four right triangles A and B, B and C, C and D, and A and D, all four right triangles uh, are congruent to each other. 
Now, they are right because rhombus has perpendicular diagonals. We know that property of the rhombuses. And we also know that uh, they all share uh, casualties and all hypotenuses are uh, congruent to each other because it's a rhombus. So obviously triangles are congruent, which means all these altitudes in each of these triangles are congruent to each other. These are corresponding altitudes from uh, uh, from the right angle to hypotenuse. So if they are all congruent to each other, that makes our figure um, a quadrangle with um, two diagonals crossing in the middle and congruent by, uh, among themselves. Two diagonals crossing in the middle and congruent to, to each other. Now, and we have already proven many times that this is a rectangle. Um, this this quadrangle which which has this property of the, uh, of the di diagonals. So again, we reduce the problem to previously solved ones, and uh, and basically shorten our way out of it. Actually, the whole mathematics is built this way. You always try to prove something new based on whatever has already been proven, and you don't go back to the beginning to the axioms to basically prove and prove again the same thing. You just use whatever you have already proved. Okay, prove that angle bisectors of a rectangle form a square. Ah, this is more interesting. So you have a rectangle and you have bisectors. Well, if I did it a little bit more precisely, then I would say that this thing E, F, G, H form a square. Now, the point G is not necessarily on AD and F as well. I mean, they can be somewhere in the middle, actually. Um, so, how can we prove that this is a square? Well, first of all, obviously it's a parallelogram. Why? Because these angles are congruent because of the parallel lines and uh, transversal. And these angles are also congruent for the same reason, because these lines are parallel, and this is transversal. Um, okay. And they are all equal to 45 degrees, because these are all angle bisectors. I don't even have to uh, prove anything related to parallelism, I just say this is 45 and this is 45. So these are equal, um, and these are alternate interior. So this is also 45 degree. This is 45 degree. All right, so we have, and this is uh, now, if we will consider AFD, a triangle AFD, you will see that this is a triangle with two angles uh, equal to 45 degrees, which leaves this to be 90. And basically the same thing for this side, also 90 degree. We just have to consider BGC triangle. This as well, because BEA triangle has 45 degrees and 45 degrees, so this is 90, and this is vertical to 90, which is equal. So we have a rectangle with all, that, uh, all in interior angles 90 degrees. That's exactly what makes it a rectangle.
okay, given a square ABCG, ABCG square points A prime is middle of CD, A prime, B prime. C prime and D prime. Uh, now we have to prove that this is a square. M N P Q. So we have to prove that M N P Q is a square. Okay, let's think about it. Oh, not only a square, but also that each side of this square is equal to two-fifths of this segment. Like in this case, MQ is two-fifths of B, 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 B prime. All right, so how can we prove that? Well, um, Let's do it this way. First of all, we know the theorem that if you have an angle and you have two uh, congruent uh, segments on one side of the angle and we draw two parallel lines, then on another side we also have congruent segments. So we will use this theorem. It was proven before in one of the lectures. Now, how can we prove it? Well, since B C prime is equal to C prime A, and these lines uh, are parallel to each other, which probably needs to be proven, actually. Yeah, let's start from the parallelism. That would be interesting. So why are these parallel? Mm -hmm. Well, probably we can say it based on the... Uh, congruence of the triangles. A, A prime G is congruent to G, G prime C, congruent to C, C prime B, and B, B prime A by two cartridges. Two cartridges. One is equal to half the side of the, uh, of the uh, square and another is the whole uh, side of the square, and they're all right triangles, so two casualties is enough to uh, prove their uh, congruence, which means that these angles are congruent to each other. Okay, since these two angles are congruent to each other, um, uh, that's why oh okay before we do this since we have proven that these uh, triangles are congruent to each other and using this theorem This plus this is equal to 90 degree. Why? Because this angle is equal to this, and these two in sum gives you 90 degrees. Because this because C G prime G is a right triangle, and uh, we have already proven that this angle is congruent to this one, since these two are two acute angles in a big triangle, these two angles make up 90 degrees as well, which means this is a 90 degree angle. 
And in exactly the same fashion, we prove that this is 90 degree, and this is 90 degree, and this is 90 degree, which means whatever we have in the center is rectangle, because all angles are right angles. They're all vertical to these guys. So, let me just start again. Let me repeat this particular logic. D, D prime C is right triangle, because, you know, this is a right angle. Now, these angles are congruent to each other because this right triangle is co uh, congruent to this right triangle. They have exactly the same uh, cachety, which means that since these two angles of this triangle make 90 degree, these, tri these two angles also make 90 degree, and in a small triangle, D prime C N, this remains to be 90 degree. Okay, so all angles are 90 degrees, so this is a rectangle. Now, question is, why uh, is this particular rectangle is a square? Why sides are equal? Okay. Um, Okay, now since these two angles make up 90 degree, and these two angles, this and this, make 90 degree, so these two angles, C prime C D and A A prime D, are congruent to each other. Because being added the same angle here or here, they make up 90 degrees. So they are the same. And since they are the same, CC prime and AA prime are parallel to each other because these are corresponding angles. And same thing everywhere else. So the lines are parallel, which means since these two uh, segments are congruent to each other, these two should be congruent to each other because this is an angle and we cut it through with two parallel lines. So, this one, side of the uh, 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 quadrangle in the middle, has exactly the same side as this one. But now, uh, let's think about this one. Uh, now, these are exactly the same for obvious reasons, for the same reason, uh, because these are equal to each other, and uh, since these are also the same, these are also the same, now, um, So these triangles D prime C N and B M C prime also are congruent to each other because they have an acute angle and the hypotenuse uh, the same. So this is also two and this is also two and this is two and this is two strikes. Okay. So these are all um, congruent segments. So. I have basically proven that this is a rectangle and this is a rhombus because all sides are uh, congruent to each other, which means it's a square. So the only thing which remains to be proven is that this length is two-fifths of the whole CC prime. Well, um, what, what I would like to prove that this particular piece, MC prime, is half of this. Um, how can that be proven? Well, very easily. Let's draw a line here and consider this is C double prime. Now, B, M, C, and C, C double prime, A, are congruent because since these are parallel, the angles are congruent and hypotenuses are exactly the same because C prime is a midpoint of AB. 
That's why this is equal to this. But at the same time, since this is equal to this, since it's a parallelogram, this small c, m, q, uh, c double prime. Uh, so what we have is we have this particular piece basically divided by two equal segments, each of them congruent to this one. So this one is half of this. And in turn, this piece and these pieces are all the same, right? They're all the same. So every short piece here, 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 and here, every short piece is half of the uh, square. And square has the side equal to this one. So we have one segment plus one segment, this plus this, plus half segment. This one. Whatever the segment is. You can use like x plus x plus x divided by 2. And what do we have here? Well, this is obviously 5 seconds. This one being 2 seconds of the segment, which is 2 fifths. So this is 2 fifths. So if you divide this by 2, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 pieces and two pieces are on this side. Well, the drawing is a little messy. I hope you understand. Okay. Okay. Uh, given a square ABCG and points square A, B, C, D, again, square, and points A prime, B prime, C prime, C prime, positioned inside A, B, corresponding with such the segments. Okay, this is on the same distance as this, on the same distance as this, and on the same distance as this. So A, A1 is congruent to BB uh, prime, I mean CC prime and DG prime. And now we connected, connected these points. And we have to prove that this is a square. Well, let's think about it this way. Since it was a square, and we have already uh, made these segments congruent to each other, that means these segments are also congruent to each other because each big segment represents the side of the square minus something which is the same on all four sides. Now that makes all our uh, triangles, right triangles, mind you, because this is a square, so these are all right angles, uh, congruent to each other, which means that every side is congruent. So that's number one, which means this is a rhombus. Now, next, how can we prove that the angles are the same? But obviously, angles are the same because from a 180 degree angle, we subtract one acute angle, a smaller acute angle, and a bigger acute angle. One from this triangle and one from this triangle. And here we do exactly the same. From 180 degree we have to subtract one small uh, acute angle and one bigger acute angle. And we always get uh, the same difference. Same thing is here. We subtract a small acute angle and a big acute angle. And since all triangles are congruent to each other, we always have exactly the same. And by the way, why do we have 90 degrees? Well, because some of these two uh, acute angles of, uh, of the right triangle is always 90 degrees. So from 180, we subtract sum of two acute angles, either these or these, doesn't really matter. And we always get 90 in the remainder. So we have a rhombus 
which has all uh, angles equal to 90 degrees, which is a square. <coughs> okay, the last problem. What condition should a quadrangle satisfy if a new quadrangle with vertices at midpoints of each side form parallelogram or rhombus or rectangle or square? So, we have some kind of a quadrangle. Now we connect midpoints. Question is, what condition should this quadrangle satisfy for this new quadrangle to be a parallelogram? Uh, the answer is um, no other additional condition, because for any quadrangle, if you connect midpoints, you will get parallelogram. Why? Because if you consider this diagonal, in a triangle ABC, um, EFGH, uh, EF would be a mid segment because it connects two midpoints of sides of this triangle. And we know that the mid segment is always parallel to the base and equal its half. But from the triangle ACD, GH is also a mid segment because G is midpoint of this and H is midpoint of this, which means GH is also parallel to AC and equal its side, uh, its half. So EF and GH are both parallel to AC and equal its half. In our case, for uh, proving that this is parallelogram, Forget about the lengths, that this is one half of the diagonal. What's important is that it's parallel. Now, but same thing would be with this diagonal. For this diagonal, EH is a mid-segment in a triangle ABG, which means it's parallel to BG and equal its half, but we will use it later on. BCG triangle has FG as a mid-segment, which means FG is also parallel to BG. So these are always parallel. Which means that the uh, uh, sub sub problem A, um, what condition should a quadrangle satisfy to to have these midpoints connected, uh, uh, making a parallelogram? No other condition. Any quadrangle will do. Now, how about rhombus? Well, rhombus has a property that the sides are not only parallel, but also equal to each other in lengths. They are complement. Now we know that two diagonals are actually um, twice as big as um, parallel to them sides. So FG and EH are equal to each other and equal to half of BB. Now, GH and EF also are parallel and equal to each other and equal to half of AC. So for these sides, all of them to be congruent, equal in size, we have to have diagonals which are equal in size. In, in size. So congruent diagonals are needed for this particular um, quadrangle which is formed by midpoints to become a rhombus. So parallel parallelogram is always rhombus only if diagonals are congruent to each other. They are equal in length. How about rectangle? Okay. Since again these sides are parallel to corresponding diagonals, and we know that rectangle has right angle uh, between the sides, so these angles are supposed to be right angles. For them to be right, we need this angle to be right. So if diagonals are perpendicular to each other, that makes not necessarily equal in lengths, only perpendicular to each other. 
that sufficient condition for the sides of this parallelogram to be also perpendicular to each other, making all the right angles, and that's why it becomes a, a, a rectangle. And finally, uh, square. Now, square is rhombus and um, a rectangle. It has to have equal in size uh, angles, since it's a rectangle, and equal in size sides, because it's a rhombus. So that's what makes that, that's what makes a square. So, in this particular condition, we just have to combine whatever we have already um, determined for rhombuses and rectangles, which means if our diagonals are congruent, equal in size to each other, and perpendicular to each other, then um, we will have uh, a square if we connect uh, midpoints. Uh, well, basically that's it. That was the last problem. Thanks for your attention. And uh, don't forget to go to unizor.com for all additional educational material. And uh, I would also like to um, encourage parents or supervising uh, teachers to go to the site and use its ability to control the educational uh, process of your students by enrolling them and checking their exam score. Uh, thanks very much and good luck.